Sunset League trophy, and a lot of the names are inscribed on it. But uh, back um, in the 30s, there was a very significant league, a uh, baseball league around uh, this area, and Pittsfield had, the, uh, it was called the Suncook Valley Baseball League, and Pittsfield had four teams. Oh. And uh, one of them produced the Major League Baseball player that, that I showed you earlier. Uh -huh. uh, and we had several others that could have played Major League Baseball or tried out but didn't make it. Um, these are simply, uh, some, there's an old baseball glove, there's an old uh, sweater. Um, I and there's see. a lot of baseball pictures here. And this is this picture up here is uh, a picture of the Sunset League teams, four teams. Oh my see, goodness. Martin Store sponsored one. Harriman Free Harriman and Freeze Insurance Agency spot, uh, sponsored another one. And the Drakes, another, and Pelosia's Garage. And that's taken on Drake Field, is yes, it not? Yes, that's the grandstand. Uh huh. That was taken in 1929. Good grief. And Green's <laughs> Drugstore. Those, oh. are, those are all oh, business establishments that sponsored the teams. And I was, I, I was, did not get in to see this, but at the end of it, when they combined some of these teams, there'd be 200 people down at the park watching these games at night. And we're talking about the local park right here in Pittsfield, right which here. is quite a large park. Drake Field. Drake Field, and uh, uh, it's uh, about two or three blocks from where we stand, would yes. you say, roughly? Right on the river. Right on the river. Beautiful place. Yeah. It still has a, a major league uh, baseball diamond. Yes. Uh, many soccer fields where the students play and what have you. Tennis courts. Tennis courts. Course. Oh, beautiful place. Wonderful place to walk your dog, take a, a walk and what have you. Right. Then we squeezed into this area some fire, fireman oh, fire I memorabilia. See. I see. Uh, just to show you one kind of unique thing. See this bubble on the bottom? Yes. You know why that's there? I have in the fog. So yet. nobody could steal the damn thing and use it for something else because yeah. no good. Oh, I around. see. It was a water bucket. You see. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. That is really Here's some old fire helmets that we had. Interesting. And uh -huh. this is when we had the old alarm boxes. Oh ah, yes. yeah. You, old, you opened that up and you rang the alarm and I you see. would tell where the fire where I the see. fire call came from and interesting. Yeah. Okay, well, how about this place across here where we have a large spinning wheel and this some other a, interesting looking this stuff? This is actually a shaker spinning wheel. The genuine article. The genuine article. My it's been goodness. It's certified by a man by the name of Thompson who, who does this sort of thing. I'll be this doing it. a genuine uh, article. This half of the room is devoted to business. And you can see a lot of pictures. These are all bankers up here. They, were they look like bankers. bankers. They look pretty serious. <laughs> That's Colonel James Drake. He was president of the bank uh, in I the 1800s. See. And that's, of course, uh, that's what Drake Field is named in honor of. Uh, is that true? It's, or? It's, it's, it's not aimed in honor of this Drake, but his father. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. Uh, well, it's really the Drake family. Is that what it is? Yeah, they were okay. descendants of this man okay. uh, uh, that, that gave the money for Drake Field. I see. see. Very generous donation. Very, very. They had plenty of money to, to be generous with. Okay, well, that's... They were very generous. <laughs> Here we have... Oh, my uh, goodness. These are doctor's bags. Um, Trying to see, I can't see off the top of my head, but these are very old doctor's bags. Um, so these were from local physicians. These were local the, physicians, yes. I see. And um, I'm sorry, but right off the top of my head, I can't come up with the names uh, of who they were. There's uh, the old calculating machine with they, the ha crank from, handle on it. Yep, that was from the bank here. I remember <laughs> seeing them. I remember them. those. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um, then we have more memorabilia in there. This okay. side of the room is devoted to industry. Okay, I'm going to switch around here. And um, 
of course, the major industry, the first major industry in Pittsfield was shoes. Oh, interesting. Yeah. They, every, I won't say every, but nearly every farmer had a, either a little tack room or an outbuilding or a place in the barn where they made shoes in the winter. They were idle in the winter, and that was a good cash crop. Oh. You see, and they could do that. There was one tragedy. One year, in the spring, the trucker, of course it was Huss and Wagon, Huss and uh -huh. he had a wagon, he went around all the farms and collected all the shoes, and they brought them into the hotel, which was where Dave Pollard's funeral home is, the Tuttle Mansion is now. Oh, okay. And he put the wagon in the barn for the night, and he was going to leave the first thing in the morning that night. The barn burned down in most of the building. Oh, and with the shoes. With the shoes. And of oh, course, no. there was no such thing as insurance those days. <laughs> so for several years, people were destitute in this community until they could build their funds back up. Uh, quite a tragedy. One of the big tragedies. Good in grief. The history. Yeah. All, all, uh, all based around the shoes uh, the that, that we take. Shoes. That we take for at least I take for granted today. Yeah, well, they today make them a little different today. Than yeah, <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Uh, but um, yeah, we had huge shoe shoe factories. Oh, uh, interesting. Uh, three major major shoe factories. I uh, see. And some smaller ones. That uh -huh. was the first industry, and then of course. Globe firefighting, globe, uh, globe firefighting suits. Which is still in, which is in still business today. In a big operation today. In fact, they just bought another plant that uh, makes boots up in Maine. Oh, my the goodness. Last couple of weeks. Now, how many people would you say that they hire locally? Do you happen to know offhand? It's, uh, it's a good number. Well, I think it's around 300, but I hate to be quoted on uh, No, I understand. I understand. <laughs> It's a big, Did, big operation. Yeah, so as we drive into Pittsfield, we can see the, the factory right off the road there. Right, and they're internationally known oh, for yes. making top quality fire equipment right here out of yeah. Pittsfield. Well, the act, there's no doubt they're the world's leader. Excellent, so, excellent. Um, so that, that, that business uh, started uh, oh, back in the, oh, I want to say... Almost the end of the 1800s, I believe. I'd have to look it up. I understand, well, it's but it's been there for a while. Years, yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. And the next big industry was uh, Pittsfield Weaving. Oh. Um, we had uh, several weaving companies in town, but that was the biggest one. Uh huh. And that was thriving until a few years ago, and then foreign competition uh, simply put it out of business, and so uh -huh. that's gone now, which oh, is that's a big loss to Pittsfield. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. Uh, those are the three big industries. Okay, and then down here. Well, over here we have a collection of items, uh, silver and plates and pottery and silverware. Oh, I see, I see. Um, much of it going way, way back uh, in history. Good grief. Um, uh, they're all labeled so that we know who gave them and uh, when they arrived. I we have see. a little collection of miniature um, chairs, bureaus, and so forth. Oh, I see. Um, these were uh, made by Gilbert Page. Um, this is a hobby that he has, and you can see how uh, nicely done those things are. Interesting. I notice you have now. This is something I've never seen before. These are just beautiful. Yeah, those. That is wax. Those this is wax. all wax. That's all wax. It was made by uh, Florence Batchelder. Um, there was a hobby of hers, and look, about when were they made? Did, did you oh, know what they? Uh, let's see. Actually, it was not. It was given by Florence Batchel. I see. They were made by Henry Osgood's mother in 1861. Good grief. Henry Osgood was one of the more famous people in Pittsfield during his time because he was a photographer. Oh, And he I took see. all the old pictures that we now have of Pittsfield, and without him we wouldn't have a lot of our history. I see. If you want I to see. see. You want to know what this is? Yes. That came off the original town clock. 
Oh, that's one of the hands. That's one of the hands <laughs> off the town clock. <laughs> that's fascinating. Okay. And uh, this cross yes. is off the top of the Catholic Church on River Road. Oh, I'll be darned. That is fascinating. They had to replace it. This was a this was a sign that sat in the building next door for my entire youth. It was owned oh. by the Christian Science Society. And they used to have readings and programs in there in the little building next door to us. Fascinating. Um, what a diverse history we have here. Oh, yes. And then, of course, there was our off office there. And then what do we have here, please, Larry? This is, on this side, it's primary, it's military. Um, this is the, these are Civil War veterans. Oh, my they, goodness. They had a reunion here in Pittsfield in 1916 and this was a hotel long since torn down i see where right aid is now oh a hotel I, yeah, called the I, Mayotte hotel i see and uh, they gathered here they gathered at different places different towns every year i see and in 1916 they came to pittsfield um this is uh reuben t levitt he fought in the Civil War, uh, was very well known around Pittsfield during his day. Is that any relationship to our, our dear Reuben? It is. I really, yeah, yeah, I think it's, it'd be his great-grandfather. Oh, that that's fascinating. Yeah. And we have a street, a road named after him, Levitt Road. Levitt Road, yes. Yeah, I see. Uh, that's his wife. I see. Uh -huh. um, let's see, we have... I don't know why these happen. They, we're straightening things out. These are two gold-headed canes. Um, this was Governor Tuttle's Good cane. grief. Governor Tuttle um, had, a, had one of the major businesses here in Pittsfield. He, was a, he, had a, he made tailored suits. In fact, my, father, my grandfather came here to work for him. Um, he built what is now the Tuttle Mansion, or where Dave Pollard has his funeral home. Oh, I see. And he contributed the money to build the memorial school, which is now the police station across the street. I see. And he was elected governor. And uh, he, in those days, it was fashionable to carry a cane. And you can see this is a gold-headed cane that he carried. That is fascinating. Um, This is this was made by Jonathan Batchelder, another person lived here in Pittsfield. Uh -huh. He lived uh, he lived actually where Cedric Dustin has his dentist's office now. He lived in that building. Of course, it was a single family home then. Uh -huh. He made this cane, and the unique thing about it is, if you look at the top of it. That's gold fleck, it's the gold uh, mine from out in California. Oh, I'll be done. And he took that, and all those little flakes of gold in there, of course, would be mined out and used. I see. Now, I noticed when we first came in that there were a, you had a lot of publications. Yes. Would you mind taking us uh, and giving an overview of sure. what you have here, please? Sure. Well, that was most fascinating. I could have, it, 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 these films didn't have a, a, a life <laughs> for how much you can upload on the internet. We, we could spend a lot more time on this. Well, in terms of the books. Yes. Um, oh my goodness, look at that. A five, five volumes of um, Pittsfield's World War II soldiers and sailors, veterans I should say. Um, all of the people that enlisted from Pittsfield or were drafted from Pittsfield, um, we compiled biographies and pictures on them, and we published a five-volume set. That's fascinating. Uh, then um, one of our big projects at the, from the very beginning, one of the first projects the I re our revived society had was what we called the cemetery project. No one knew where all the cemeteries were. There were no plots. None of the maps showed them. So we spent about a year locating all the cemeteries in Pittsfield, well over 40. And 
for two summers, uh, Ed Cantera and I got up at 4.30, we're on the road by 5 on our trusty bicycles, biking around, getting some exercise, and going to each of the cemeteries, diagramming the cemeteries, and then listing all the information on all the headstones. And we came up with a full volume set of books. Oh my goodness. One is simply on Floral Park and Hillside, which is sort of the public, even though it's private, it's the, sort of the public cemetery in Pittsfield. And then I did a book because people kept asking a lot of questions about the people that were buried there. The volume two is on the famous people buried there. And we did biographies of each of those with, with pictures. And then the third book was on the four church cemeteries. We have four church cemeteries. The Free Will Baptist Cemetery, the Congregational Meeting House Cemetery, Our Lady of Lords, the Catholic Church, and the, the, and the Quaker Cemetery. Fascinating. And then finally, we the fourth volume is on Pittsfield's prim 